decreasing at a better rate. The joblessness rate for the third quarter of the year fell by, uh, or rather, from 33.5% in the second quarter to 32.1%. That's an improvement of about 1.4 percentage points. The sectors that added the most jobs in the third quarter include community services, construction and trade, while decreases in employment were recorded in finance, private households and in manufacturing. Well, let's unpack the story now with Michael Bagram. He is the DA spokesperson for employment and labor. Michael, it's good to talk to you. And this is a sliver of good news, but is it good enough? Well, yes, in fact, it is. It, it, le it lends itself to improvement over the next few months again over, as we enter into the Christmas period. And I think we can applaud the GNU for actually creating a sentiment where job creation is now on the cards. We've had 10 years of decreasing jobs, and this is a turn. I think it's, it's wonderful news. I, I'm actually elated, uh, not only as a politician, but certainly as a labor lawyer. I'm seeing that that sentiment grow, uh, and it's growing in leaps and bounds across every sector I know. Mm. Look, it's sad to see that there's been a decrease in the manufacturing because, you know, that's the backbone of any economy, and that's pretty sad. And, yes, we can't rest on our laurels. We, it's tiny, it's small, it's just a slither, unfortunately, of increase. But I see the green shoots. I, I can actually feel it. I can feel it with colleagues of mine in the labor law field, I can feel it listening to people in industry. It is looking really good. Yes, uh, there were only three provinces that did really well. That's the Eastern Cape, the Western Cape, and the Northwest. Obviously, the Eastern Cape, it's off a very low base, but at least they're growing. Um, the terrible thing is that both Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal, both the biggest provinces in terms of employment in the past, um, have decreased again, uh, which is terrible. They, they need to... Uh, do something different. Uh, we need it quickly and we need to do something different, especially in KwaZulu-Natal, which is the most populous um, province. But we are now seeing that things are looking much better. And I think South Africans um, can give themselves a round of applause because we in South Africa need to grow. We need to ensure that our youth find jobs. They are the people that are the most vulnerable. Um, you must understand that over half the people who can't find employment are people who want employment. And we can have a look at the figures. And only, only half of the people are employed. The other half just can't find a job. So that's, that's terrible for the future. It's terrible for government. It's terrible for the fiscus. And, of course, at the end of the day, for every family, there's not one family that can tell us that they don't have someone that is unemployed. And, and that's pretty sad. Mm. That being said, I strongly believe this is a message, and it's a strong message from the GNU. Every minister is going out to see how they can actually create jobs. How can they go and create an environment? Look at the, look at the ministries under Stiernazen, Schreiber, Dean McPherson. All of them are pushing for jobs, and that's their central message. And if you go out to South Africans, you look at all those statistics when they interview South Africans, Every South African is saying jobs is the big thing. Jobs is the cornerstone, not other issues. Jobs is it, and we need jobs. We must make sure that we get as many as we can. And we must encourage small business. We have to deregulate small business. We have to do whatever we can. Even our president said in the last speech that we need to look at every single ministry and see what is the handbrake to job creation. And I'm hoping that those ministries report to the Minister of Employment and Labor and they tell the Minister of Employment and Labor, this is how we can actually create more jobs. It's got to be centralized. We've got to make sure that at the end of the day, it's the private sector that pulls us out of the jobless problems that we've got in South Africa. Absolutely. And, and you know, the reason why I asked you at the start of our interview, Michael, whether this is only just a sliver of good news is because we've now, you know, when we, when we think back to... Um, quarter two and the increase that we saw, the uptick in the unemployment numbers in South Africa in quarter two, by that time we would have already had three months without load shedding, right? And that didn't seem to have any impact on, on our unemployment rate. We've now had six months of no load shedding. Load shedding stopped at the end of March. And I, I just wonder whether, should, whether there should have been a much bigger jump in our employment numbers, given just the load shedding issue. 
Yes, I suppose you're correct, but we've still got negative legislation. We've got regulations in every single department that are basically a handbrake to job creation. But what we're seeing here is nothing different to the last three months, but what we are seeing now is that the ministers who are pushing for employment, despite everything else, despite the negative legislation, despite our onerous labor conditions, they are pushing for more and more jobs. And I'm finding that there is a sentiment amongst just general South Africans. I, I go down to the CCMA every day and I hear from general South Africans that things are starting to happen. Things Jobs are being advertised. You've never seen this in years. Now they're being advertised. So let's hope and pray that as we enter into the Christmas period, that those industries such as in tourism and catering and hotels, et cetera, et cetera, those industries soak up a lot of our youth. They need to get job experience. They need to start finding out what it's like at the workplace. And we need South Africans to get their hands on tools again and make sure that manufacturing becomes a big effort between all of us. It is something that we need to do. And look, construction has improved. And once you have construction improving, then there's a filter down to many other industries. And even trade has improved. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm hoping that most of my fellow citizens are excited. Let's praise ministers such as Stian and Schreiber and McPherson and make sure that they do more. It mustn't stop there. They must do more. We must have the next quarter we need to be able to report that we've got a much bigger growth. Yeah, absolutely. It's the bread and butter issues that we're talking about, right? Um, uh, you know, I, I don't want to um, harp on the sort of critical side of the story, but the expanded under the expanded definition, we are of unemployment. We are still in a whole heap of problem. 41.9% um, jobless in the third quarter under that definition. You're absolutely correct. And when you extrapolate that into the youth, I think, it, and I might not say that, but I think we're close on 70% unemployment with the youth. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about people in the previously disadvantaged areas, they're suffering the most. For some reason or other, the economy, the growth in the economy hasn't reached the poorest of the poor. So we've got a long road to travel, a really long road to travel. But at least we're traveling. At least we've now got out of our shackles. We're walking. We're getting there. And I, I'm positive. And I understand that, yes, we've got 41% expanded definition of unemployment. And, yes, it's terrible because it doesn't help telling a person who's standing on a street corner with a placard saying, I'm a plumber. It doesn't help him to hear or her to hear that we, we have an improvement because they're mm. suffering. They're standing over there. But you know what? For every one person that we can put back into the workplace or place into the workplace, that's a big, big step forward for that family. And so let's do it person by person. Let's all hold hands, all of us, and let's make sure. Let's make sure that the small business community doesn't feel that if they employ someone, they're going to be faced with a whole host of regulations. We need to deregulate for that small business community because all our neighbors across Africa, all of them, have deregulated the small business community and they found that their unemployment has dropped to 15, 10 percent uh, or even less. Why, why are we any different? We're better qualified than our neighbors. We are better people. We are hardworking South Africans. Let's not make government stand in the way. And I think some of the ministers are leading the way to say government must not stand in the way to job creation. It's no good to tell someone things are better when they haven't got a job. Yeah, absolutely. Michael Bagram, let me thank you for your time.